From Indiana's number one news source, this is Fox 59 News at 10. A violent end to the week with three people wounded and one killed in shootings overnight. Details on the shooting that started on the interstate and ended in an Indianapolis neighborhood. We're expecting the sun to make a return on your Sunday, but rain is still possible in some spots. We'll talk about where you may need to keep an eye to the sky in your forecast coming up. A teen missing for over a week found safe late last night. It's, it's a prayer. Amen. The surprising place he was found. Fox 59 News at 10 starts right now. We begin now at 10 with a look at our weather after a wet day here in central Indiana. It's dry now. We're in a bit of a break, but the powerful winds knocked out power to about 2000 homes today. Thankfully, that power has since been restored. We're in the weather center tonight. It's where we start with meteorologist Tucker Antico and Tucker. Uh, the weather that we're having right now, this dry spell is not going to last for too long. That's right. Yeah, we've been really rainy recently, but we had some peaks of sun today. Mm -hmm. You know, felt the grass is growing. It. That's right. Yeah, good setup for April, you know, April, well, we usually say May flowers, but I feel like with how We're warm getting, it's been, yeah. might be April flowers yes. this year. Uh, we are looking at, though, a nice change in our weather tomorrow. You caught a little sun today. You'll see more tomorrow. And we've seen improvements in uh, the wind, you could say, as well. Today we had gusts up to 50 miles per hour in Indianapolis itself and across the area as well. I believe I saw a gust of 54 in Frankfurt, and uh, I believe Westfield also had a gust of 54 today. But that wind has since died down a lot. It is still noticeable in some spots, but as a whole, it has really lightened up, and that's allowing it to feel perhaps just a little bit warmer out there. Skies have cleared as well. We did begin to see the sun come out as early as about noon today, but it really took until about five o'clock for it to fully get out into the sky. And we have had those clouds clear out very quickly now, and they're off to the northeast at this point. Actually, you can see some snow out across places like Michigan at this present time, and there was even a little bit of snow in far northern Indiana, and certainly that is also uh, no concern for us as we go through the next 24 hours. But rain is still the forecast, so let's enjoy this clear sky while we can and enjoy at least temperatures that will be around average tonight. We're going to find our way back down into the 30s, but it certainly won't get too cold. Uh, could actually slip into the 20s if you're in our northern counties. We'll come close downtown, but it will not be again too cold, especially with that wind lightening up a bit. So tomorrow you can expect it to be a cooler start, but the sun will be out. We're going to pick up a southerly wind. We're going to warm up a lot, but again, showers and even a couple storms are possible in the afternoon. We're going to talk about that more ahead in my full forecast. All right, Tucker, thank you. We have a Fox 59 crime tracker alert. What began as a call to a serious crash led to two men being found shot. Police were called to 20th and Emerson for a car that flipped over. And when they got there, police found that two men were actually suffering from gunshot wounds. Both were taken to the hospital where one of the men died. The other is said to be stable. Police say they believe the shooting actually happened on the interstate involving the driver and a passenger. Indiana State Police say the investigation is ongoing. From what we can tell, uh, it happened on the interstate. Um, unknown, uh, again, unknown if it was uh, road rage or uh, the reasoning behind this. As of right now, we're still following up on leads. Investigation is ongoing. Police say interstate shootings like this one are on the rise. Already this year, we've seen at least 10 interstate shootings. That's more than by this time in previous years. IMPD is investigating a second deadly shooting on the east side. Police say they found a man and a woman shot on East 30th Street. Police tell us a possible disturbance between the two led up to that shooting. The suspect took off from the scene. We'll keep you updated both on air and online as we continue to learn more. Metro police are also investigating a shooting this time on the near northwest side this afternoon. They found a person shot on King Avenue around 3:30 this afternoon. They're said to be awake and breathing. They haven't released any information on suspects. Anyone with information on any of these shootings can call Crime Stoppers. That number is right there on your screen. 317-262-TIPS. To a Fox 59 update now, an IMPD has made an arrest in connection to a deadly shooting on the south side yesterday. 21 year old Antoine Irvin was arrested this afternoon for a deadly shooting on South Meridian Street. 
Police found the man in critical condition outside of his home around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. That victim later died at the hospital. Metro Police say witnesses at the scene identified Irvin as the suspect. He is now facing a preliminary murder charge. A person is dead after a crash in Lawrence early this morning. It happened just after midnight on, o on Oak Landon Road near 79th Street. Police say the driver veered off the road and hit a bridge guardrail. The driver died at the scene. According to police, weather and road conditions may have been a contributing factor. An Anderson mother of two has died after a head-on crash yesterday on US 35 near Mount Pleasant. Indiana State Police say a van driven by a 24-year-old from Georgia crossed the center line, hitting the car driven by Tiffany Starkey of Anderson. Starkey was taken to the hospital but later died. The other driver and her passenger was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The investigation into that crash is ongoing. More than a week after he disappeared, Scotty Morris was found safe late last night, apparently walking right there in the town of Eaton. Fox 59's Kaylee Schuyler spoke with community members today after hearing the news. Residents in Eaton are breathing a sigh of relief tonight. It's answered prayer. Amen. 14 year old Scotty Morris disappeared on March 16th. Eight days later, police say he was spotted by an officer walking near the intersection of Harris and Hartford. The family wants to extend their greatest appreciation for Eaton PD, for the fire department, for the community, for all of the communities around the world that have been praying for this. Teresa Wilkerson helped organize a candlelight vigil for Scotty on the week anniversary of his disappearance. She's been speaking with Scotty's family and says they are ecstatic. There's no words in the English language uh, how happy. We know how happy we are times that by a million. Eaton Chief of Police released a statement today saying, quote, officers with EPD and Delaware County Sheriff's Department have been conducting interviews most of the day. There were two individuals brought in for questioning. However, they have since been cleared of involvement with any part of this case. Last Friday night when we was doing searches, there, mm -hmm. there had to be a hundred people volunteering to go walking in the woods. Yeah. And it was just moving. Many in the community shocked. The 14 year old was so close to home due to numerous search parties over the last week. Wilkerson says the community isn't stopping here. Scotty, I believe, is the catalyst for an amazing movement of the world coming together and praying specifically one child at a time home. Right now, police say Scotty is in a safe place with the assistance of Delaware County Child Protective Services. In Eaton, Kaylee Schuyler, Fox 59 News. Police tell us the family is being cooperative with the investigation. You can read all of our coverage on the disappearance of Scotty since he disappeared. It's on our website, fox59.com. New information now. Police in Marion, Indiana are looking for whoever shot and killed a man in his own apartment. Police were called to an apartment on West 5th Street around 3 this morning and found Walter Carpenter shot on the kitchen floor. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Anyone with information should call the Marion Police Department. In Seymour tonight, investigators are looking for the driver that hit and killed a father and wounded a daughter crossing the street. The crash happened last night around 1045 on Vine Street. There's no description of the vehicle that hit them, but it left the scene without stopping. The father was pronounced dead at the scene while the daughter is in the hospital with injuries to her face, hand and leg. If you know anything about this, you are asked to call Seymour police. Well, members of the sick community in Indianapolis came together today to protest the disappearance of a leader of their faith in India. The protesters say Amrit Paul Singh was trying to help bring about a revival of the Sikh faith in northern provinces of India. They say he has not been seen in a week and they're accusing the Indian government of taking him into custody. Usually they're supposed to be um, sent straight to court and we have no whereabouts of where they are right now. Um, so a lot of the Sikh population all over the world have gotten together, standing in solidarity, trying to um, spread awareness and put pressure on the Indian government to, uh, to stop what they're doing. The Indian government says the religious leader is an activist attempting to create an independent Sikh nation called Khalistan. Officials in India say they have not arrested that religious leader, 
but they are looking for. Now to a Fox 59 update. The famous Slippery Noodle Inn is now open to all ages once again. The owner of Indiana's oldest bar posted the news on Facebook yesterday. They said the state excise police had clarified an issue with their floor plan, so now they can sit minors in designated areas. They'll now be open to all ages until 9 p.m. during the week and 7.30 on the weekend when their cover charge kicks in. Up next, a search continuing the efforts to find five people who are missing after a factory exploded in Pennsylvania. And after a few busy days with rain and winds, we'll catch a bit of a break tomorrow, but rain is not completely out of the picture yet. We'll talk about chances to see it in your forecast coming up. Dozens of hospitals in Indiana have become victims of cyber attacks, breaching your data, hacking into your medical equipment. As we could not um, run equipment, so that had a great impact. Heart monitors, ventilators, medication distribution, all potential targets in ERs and ICUs statewide. People could actually die in these type of attacks. It's not if, but when your hospital will be next. What hospitals are doing to keep you and your data safe? Wednesday at 10 on Fox 59. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow, nice imagining. <laughs> well, oh. Get 3.99% APR for 48 months on many of Toyota's most popular models. Toyota, let's go places. Furry Fridays on Fox 59 Morning News is brought to you by Tom Wood Subaru. To everyone who believes in tradition, come enjoy a few of ours from Wisconsin. People in Wisconsin love a good fish fry. Really love. And we love sharing it with guests everywhere. At Culver's, we still batter our North Atlantic cod by hand to order. And we cook it to a crispy, golden perfection just for you. For you. For you. So it's crispy outside, flaky inside. Let us take care of you. With some homegrown traditions we were raised on. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to delicious. That exclusive letter that we have now obtained sent to the parents of all four victims. Some of the family members have told me they are very upset with the concept of demolition. A Banfield Special Edition, The Idaho Murders, Sunday on News Nation. On my show, we're going to go in depth and ask the tough questions. You get to make up your own mind. It's important to know what's happening in the world. I want to share that with our viewers. Elizabeth Vargas reports, premieres April 3rd, 6 5 Central, only on News Nation. When the insurance company tells you that you don't need a lawyer, then you probably need a lawyer. If you've been injured in an accident, call 1 800 2 Keller. Keller and Keller, the name you know. Save up to $170 on a set of four tires after rebate, or save even more when you finance at Bell Tire. But for one day only, Sunday, March 26th, at Bell Tire's one day Sunday sale. All tires, all brands, for any budget. Save up to $170 on a set of four tires. Sunday, March 26th. If you need new tires at the lowest tire price period, then save up to $170 on a set of four tires. Buy online, save time at Bell Tire. Visit Fiesalink.com today for $1,000 off a purpose-built roof. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow, nice imagining. <laughs> well, oh. Get 3.99% APR for 48 months on many of Toyota's most popular models. Toyota, let's go places. Happening now, the search for five missing people is continuing tonight after a deadly explosion at a candy factory in Pennsylvania yesterday. Take a look at this. The explosion was caught on camera. So far, two people have been confirmed dead and at least eight people are wounded. Right now, efforts are focused on finding those five missing people. An investigation into the cause of that explosion will begin when the search is over. A powerful storm system swept through Mississippi on Friday night, killing at least 25 people and injuring dozens more. Charles Watson reports on the next steps for the devastated area. When it hit, it just shook the house. It was not a, a long, drawn-out thing. Powerful storms and at least one tornado left a trail of devastation across Mississippi on Friday night, killing dozens of people. The storms ripped up trees, overturned trailers, and leveled homes and businesses. Thousands are left without power. Tornadoes are 
not unusual around here anyway, but it's kind of like when I oh, it hit over there, but it didn't hit right here. Search and rescue teams are spread across the state working to pull people from the rubble, but the town of Rolling Fork hit the hardest where entire neighborhoods are now gone. The twister made its way northeast, upending Silver City and Winona while producing golf ball sized hell. Residents of Armory are being told to boil drinking water and will be under a curfew, according to the city's police department. President Biden spoke to Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves on Saturday. In a statement, the president called the images out of the state, quote, heartbreaking and offered the full support of the federal government. He said FEMA is now assisting with recovery efforts. This is definitely going to be a longer term recovery effort. Uh, it's going to take the entire federal family coming together to support these communities, some of which um, are some of our poorest communities uh, in the state. As cleanup continues, the South is bracing for another round of storms on Sunday. In Amory, Mississippi, Charles Watson, Fox News. Well, we're certainly wishing them the best. Luckily, around here, the weather has not been that bad. Just only problems were happening, a little soggy, some winds that have been quite terrible, though. Meteorologist Tucker Antico is tracking a bit of a dry spot before the rain returns right through the week, Tucker. Yeah, that's right. A dry spot's the best way I'd word that, too, because it's not going to be a dry stretch, uh, just really a brief break from some of the rain, and we've seen quite a bit of it. But tonight we catch that break and it's going to take us back down to the lower 30s to begin tomorrow morning, but that's not too far off from our average. It's also uh, it's going to be dry, so we'll enjoy that. Of course, something we haven't seen much of and today mainly before sunrise, though we did have some rain after sunrise too, but for the most part it was early. We saw a half inch of rain that now puts us over five inches for the month of March, which at any point at the end of the month, that's more rain than we typically see in this uh, 30 day stretch, 30, uh, 31 day stretch rather. <laughs> it's a two inches above where we should be for this point in the month and for the year. Uh, we're already over 11 inches, which is three inches more than where we would typically be uh, at this point in the year. Most of the rain, the heaviest rain at least fell south of the city. Uh, it was still rainy in the northern part of the city here too. This is since Thursday, by the way, but we saw the highest amounts south of Indianapolis all the way up to four and a half inches, a little more than that in Franklin. Now there were some storms Thursday night, which accounted for some isolated high totals between four and five inches, but there was a very large spread uh, in that main uh, bullseye zone. You can call it that saw three to four inches of total rain in just a 36 hour window, basically a month's worth of rain in 36 hours. And of course you can see some of those locations right there. Indianapolis itself in that 36 hour window picked up two inches over half the uh, typical monthly rainfall. 40 degrees now your current temperature, clear skies. We talked about how it's quieting down and it's going to be temporary. I will say it does look a lot better than it did before and you can see that drier air across most of the central US here, but we have another storm system, a weak one at that, but enough of a system that it's going to kick up the atmosphere. It's going to move to our north tomorrow, but this uh, extension here, we call this a trough. That's just basically a little wave of energy that's going to pass through the state and it will make for the uh, potential for a few showers and even a couple storms are possible in the uh, afternoon here. Temperatures will rise though as it approaches us. You can see the 50s out there near Kansas City relative to the low 40s here in Indiana, but that warmth that'll be temporary too, but enjoyable tomorrow. We'll go from lower 30s all the way up to upper 50s, even low 60s uh, could even approach 70 well off to the southwest part of the state. I'm thinking near Evansville, uh, but it will still be a nice warm up. Again, we're going to see a temporary warm up though. Our weather is going to stay active and heading into Monday. Well, that's going to take us back down to the 40s. So be prepared. It's going to be another roller coaster of a week in terms of our weather. But uh, tomorrow, if you do want to get outside, I believe the first half of the day is going to be the best. Even the afternoon won't be bad, but you will have to keep an eye to the sky. Here we are around five o'clock. You can see some of those showers and even a couple storms uh, possible, uh, primarily in northern and north central Indiana here. That window to see rain is largely going to be around 2 30 to about 7 30. Then we'll all calm down at least uh, temporarily. Once we head overnight into Monday, we'll have another chance for perhaps some steadier rain. That'll take us into the early hours of Monday morning. Monday itself, we're not expecting much rain, but clouds will certainly hang around. And you know, this week stays active weather wise, and that's going to mean that Monday isn't the only day we could see precip. Even Tuesday, we'll be keeping an eye on the chance for an isolated shower 
and then we'll even have another storm system later in the week. So I'll show you that here on our seven day. It might be easier to visualize uh, if we give you the next seven all together. Sunday, of course, I believe that's the best day to get out. There is that chance for rain in the afternoon, but largely it stays dry. Monday, we had that chance for AM rain. Tuesday, isolated showers. Monday and Tuesday will be the coolest days of the week, by the way. Wednesday and Thursday, also not bad days to get out, but Friday and into the start of the weekend. Again, that's our next storm system I was talking about. It comes with some milder weather, but uh, that rain can't quite shake it yet. Hopefully it helps with uh, seeing some growth this upcoming month of April. All right, time for spring is definitely here. Up next, state budget negotiations, a major part of the House Republican budget proposal that could be slashed in the Senate. Get away with a great deal at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR plus 500 bonus cash and no payments for 90 days on select models. Visit buyhyundai.com today. At Long John Silver's, our $6 shrimp baskets will save you from the sea of sandwich sameness. Whether they're fried to go to perfection or sizzling on the grill, our $6 shrimp baskets will have you hooked. Order online at longjohnsilver's.com. This year. Fox 59 News is brought to you by Merchants Bank of Indiana. Tomwood Volkswagen reminds you distracted driving is dangerous driving. Don't be a danger on the road. Go to Tomwood.com and take the pledge not to be a distracted driver and make Indiana roads safer for everyone. Please join Epcon Communities for our Spring Open House Weekend. Saturday, March 25th, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, March 26th, noon to 6. Visit both of our Hamilton County locations. For details and directions, go to EpconIndieOpenHouse.com. Now open the finest new hotel and spa in northern Indiana. Escape, indulge, and relax. Gaming, award-winning cuisine, and the entertainment experience of your life are waiting just for you. Now open Orwin's Casino Hotel in South Bend. Oh, uh, oh it, no, I got this. Uh, let me help you with that. No, I'm good, man, thanks. Are you sure? I got it. Oh, I'm okay. You want to flip those over, though. Everyone can use a little help now and then. The Volkswagen Tiguan with standard front assist. Visit your Volkswagen dealer today and lease the 2023 Tiguan S for just $249 a month. The Going Out of Business Price Blitz is on at the weekend's only total furniture liquidation. Deeper discounts on every item in every department. We're slashing prices on reclining sofas and love seats, smashing prices on mattress sets, smashing prices on living rooms, on dining rooms, on bedrooms, lift chairs, and more. Yes, we're mashing all prices into the ground. Grandfather floor clocks from Howard Miller at the lowest prices around. And everything is in stock and ready to go. Don't miss the Going Out of Business Price Blitz at weekends only on Center Run Drive in Castleton and South Emerson Avenue, Greenwood. Hurry in to see us today. Richard Allen was a closely held secret. And you're growing. That's why some state lawmakers. Indiana's most watched news, Fox 59. Get away with a great deal at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR plus 500 bonus cash and no payments for 90 days on select models. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Earlier this week, Indiana Republicans have proposed a budget that would increase the state's school voucher program. The increase takes up a majority of the newly proposed funding for the education in the state, which is causing backlash from Democrats and public school organizations. They say the money drains away from public schools. Republicans also appear hesitant at the size of that spending. They've got it coming out of they, they've added a lot of money to the K through 12 budget, but uh, some of that is whittled down as to what actually goes to the uh, to our traditional public schools because of the way they structured it. Uh, so that's why we're taking it. The Senate will take up the budget soon. Both the House and Senate need to agree on that proposal before the end of April. Nearly 200 students came out to get a free dress and suit at Project Prom. The event is held each year by the Johnson County Public Library. Organizers take donations of dresses, suits and other accessories and then offer them free of charge to kids trying to go to prom. Prom dresses especially can be quite expensive, so giving people another option help takes a bit of the stress off of families. 
I hope it helps a lot, honestly. That's that's our goal, is to make this easier for, for teens, parents, the whole nine yards. We just want them to enjoy prom again. Around 175 dresses and 21 suits were given out today. Project Prom will be open again tomorrow from 1 until 4 in the afternoon. The dresses and suits are all donated by the community. Organizers say they accept donations of the dresses and suits year round. You can head to the links page of fox59.com to find out more information on how you can donate. Indianapolis Animal Care Services held an open house today to help the community learn more about getting involved with the shelter. IACS has been at or over capacity for months now, and they need people to help and step up to foster or adopt. Staff was on hand to answer questions and help adopters meet potential animals. The shelter says they are finally starting to free up some room as more people have adopted animals. They're thankful for those who have helped over the last week. We are very, very grateful to everyone in Indianapolis, Mary County, Indiana in general, um, who has um, supported us throughout the years. Um, it's not been easy. Um, you know, we're always, we're always full. We're always needing help. IACS says it is looking to make this a quarterly event. Meanwhile, some dogs at IACS got to take a field trip to the IMAX theater at the Indiana State Museum. Moviegoers were able to fill out an adoption application before the movie and meet some adoptable dogs in person. Hoosiers could also donate to IACS and get a free popcorn in return. And obviously, they need some help unloading some of these dogs from the shelter, finding them home so they're not all cooped up in the kennels. And, you know, if we see an opportunity with a film like Superpower Dogs and John Wick to, to work with them, we want to do that. IACS still needs volunteers or people willing to adopt or foster. All adoptions are currently free and you can do a trial period of two weeks before you commit to an animal. Up next, drug discussions, the powerful new opioid being found right here in Indiana and the tough conversations that now have to be had. Good morning, thank you for joining us. We're following breaking news right now. Let's go to our reporter on the scene. Stand by camera two. But storms will not get here. Take that alternate route, it'll save you about eight to 10 minutes. Having a great time. All of that sounds like a good start to your day. Fox 59 Morning News. One day, Sunday, it's a flash sale at the room place. Everything is discounted to move fast with an extra 30% off the lowest price. Take five years to pay. One day, Sunday, at the room place. You'll love our style. You'll love our prices. Hi, Jeff Roush for Tom Roush Mazda with some great deals going on right now. Like a new Mazda CX-30, leased from just $249 per month. Or the ever-popular Mazda CX-5, leased it from just $299 per month. Or the brand new Mazda CX-50 from just $329 per month. Or own any of these new Mazdas starting at just 0.9% APR for 36 months. So come on in to Tom Roush Mazda and get one of those great deals. Just north of the high prices. Class, what you see here is the result of living with old, ill-fitting, and drafty windows. Dealing with that monthly energy bill. But Window Nation windows are designed to be energy efficient. So your energy bills aren't such a big deal. I'm good. You get the idea. Buy two windows, get two free, and for a limited time, get 0% interest for 60 months. Window Nation, the perfect fit. Oh, that spin class was brutal. I bet. Hey, can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? It's a Buick Envision. That's a really tight spot. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. Buick Envision, built around you, all of you. Current eligible Buick lessees get this low mileage lease on this 2023 Envision Preferred for around $2.99 per month. Deny, delay, devalue. Time's on our side. It's a serious accident. Lots of medical bills, wrecked vehicles. Still, don't see a problem. It's the law offices of Keller and Keller. And they want triple what we offered. And a fair settlement now. Triple. If you've been injured in an accident, tell them you mean business. Call 1-800-2-KELLER. Keller and Keller. Let's settle this one. 
Find the one at Hubler Mazda. For a limited time, get 0.9% APR financing for 36 months on select new 2023 Mazdas. Or lease a new Mazda CX-5 for just $410 per month for 36 months. Plus, new inventory is arriving weekly. And every new car includes our 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty. Visit HubblerMazda.com. One day, Sunday, it's a flash sale at the Room Place. Everything is discounted to move fast with an extra 30% off the lowest price. Take five years to pay. One day, Sunday, at the Room Place. You'll love our style. You'll love our prices. Welcome back. It's 1030, and here are tonight's top stories. What began as a call to a serious crash led to two men being found shot. Police were called to 20th and Emerson for a car that crashed and flipped over. When they got there, police found two men who were shot. Both were taken to the hospital. That's where Anthony Shellman died. The other victim remains hospitalized. Police confirmed another car shot into the victim's car. This is the 11th interstate shooting this year. A person is dead after a crash in Lawrence early this morning. It happened just after midnight on Oak Landon Road near 79th Street. Police say the driver veered off the road and hit a bridge guardrail. The driver died at the scene. According to police, weather and road conditions may have been a contributing factor. More than a week after he disappeared, Scotty Morris has been found safe late last night, apparently walking right there in the town of Eaton. Scotty was transferred to IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital as a precaution. Police tell us that Morris has been placed in a safe environment with the assistance of the Delaware County Child Protective Services. Police say the family is being cooperative with the investigation. Westfield is offering a stark warning to the community after two teens overdosed on a highly potent new drug being found in Hamilton County. The new drug is called Pyro and is a synthetic opioid about 10 times stronger than fentanyl. Fox 59's Max Lewis spoke to experts about the conversations parents need to have with their kids about drugs. This is very scary stuff when you're talking about pyro. Westfield police say the drug first popped up in Colorado in the middle of last year and made it to Indiana by the end of 2022 and is now in their backyard. We've had some incidents here in our community. Two incidents involved two teenagers overdosing on pills laced with pyro. Earlier this year, a Westfield man overdosed and died after taking a similar pill. The same thing happened to a man in nearby Noblesville. The fact that it's an unknown drug and an unknown potency uh, really kind of multiplies that that danger level. Pyro is cut into pills like these and made to look like medications such as oxycodone and Percocet. That resemblance to legitimate medications is what has officials so concerned. Anytime you see a fake prescription pill that's being sold by a drug dealer on the street, you just don't know where you're getting. Mike Gannon with the DEA says it's worrying to see such a powerful drug on the streets. At the level that pyro is, you know, you're, you're really looking to kill somebody if you, if, you, if you ever gave them that drug. It's bad enough with the pills that are out there with fentanyl. Both Gannon and Westfield PD say preventing overdoses, especially among teenagers, has to start with tough conversations. When it comes to these type of drugs, we can't have the not my kid attitude. In several instances, these drugs are being purchased by kids online and through social media. Lieutenant Billy Adams says people who think it can't happen in their community are kidding themselves. We have to have those conversations because it could be our kids. Uh, it could be friends of our kids. Max Lewis, Fox 59 News. The DEA has resources for parents on how to talk to your kids about using drugs. We've linked those on our website, fox59.com. Just look for this story. Speaking of which, next week, Fox 59 is partnering with the Mark Wahlberg Foundation, the DEA, and Walmart to talk about the growing number of fentanyl-related overdoses. You can learn more what you can do to help those with living with addiction. Join us Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. for a special half-hour special followed by a conversation on Facebook Live. Well, the worst of the rain is out for now, but there is still a chance that we see some showers, even a couple storms on your Sunday. We'll talk about where those showers and storms may be and what our outlook is as we begin the week in your forecast coming up.